now available in paperback and e-readers, Isis, Samurai Goddess. The Goddess Next Door takes on Kung Fu killers in this action-packed martial arts Isis series adventure. Get Isis, Samurai Goddess, in paperback and e-readers today. I was reading an article talking about how Captain Marvel is going to be the new flagship character for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And when I heard that they were going to make Captain Marvel the flagship character for the Marvel Cinematic Universe, I was quite troubled by that announcement. Now, when it comes down to this Captain Marvel character who's supposed to be portrayed by Brie Larson, this is an untested and unproven character. And to give her the title of being the flagship character for the Marvel Cinematic Universe without her earning that title is a quite troubling thing to see. Now, when I take a critical look at this decision to give the Captain Marvel character the flagship title, this smacks of gynocentrism. And it smacks of gynocentrism because it looks like the beta males who are running Marvel want to try to elevate a female to a high position, but then this female is being elevated to this high position without earning any sort of merit. And without her earning this position, that's something that we really need to take a real critical look at, because your Captain Marvel in the comics is one of the most poor-selling characters in the Marvel Universe, and she's one of the most reviled characters in the Marvel Universe. So giving her this flagship status is something the character has not earned, and she has not even proven at the box office. Now, if they wanted to build the new Marvel Cinematic Universe around someone, you would think it would be the Black Panther. Now, the Black Panther has proven that he's a box office hit, and he has proven that he has an international following. So you would think you would want to lay your foundation around the Black Panther in the same way that the Marvel Cinematic Universe laid its foundation on Tony Stark and Iron Man in the original first three phases of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. You would think you want to lay your foundation on a proven character and a, pro a character who has a proven following, not an untested and unproven character. Now, in addition to the gynocentrism I see with this announcement to make Captain Marvel the flagship character of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, I also see some feminism and some white supremacy. And the reason why I see feminism and white supremacy in this decision is because it looks like they want to elevate this white woman to a position of high status that she has not earned, and they want to deny the black man, the Black Panther, his position that he did earn on merit. Because when we look at the Black Panther, again, here is a character who not only made a billion dollars at the box office, but they made a billion dollars at the box office over a couple of months. And this character has proven that they have an established following and they have an established position of making money. But when I look at the gynocentrism that seems to be that have gone out of the Marvel comics into the Marvel Studios, it's all about elevating women to positions that they have not earned. And again, Captain Marvel, again, is one of the poorest selling titles at Marvel Comics right now, and she is one of the most reviled characters in the among comic fans. And this Captain Marvel character, as they're presenting her on screen, as I'm seeing it, she's coming across like a Mary Sue in the same way that Rey came across as a Mary Sue in Star Wars. And when it came down to Rey and her being this avatar for Kathleen Kennedy and then being this Mary Sue who could do everything, this is what led to many Star Wars fans disliking Rey and what led to the complete decline of the Star Wars brand. And what I fear with what they're doing with this Captain Marvel character is they're going to bring this Carol Danvers in and she's going to do to Marvel what Rey did to Star Wars. Because when I look at her power set, it's clearly that of a Mary Sue character. Here we have this Captain Marvel character who's going to be coming out of nowhere as the, after the Marvel Universe, Cinematic Universe has been built up for 10 years, and she's going to come into the Marvel Cinematic Universe and have the power 
an ability to go out here and move planets. And I think about that, and it does not fit organically into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. You have this female who was supposed to be so powerful, yet we never saw her show up for your Avengers Infinity War to help take on any Thanos, but she's going to come out of nowhere after he gets this Infinity Gauntlet and be part of the group that's going to save the day. That smacks of a Mary Sue, and that's one of those things that really annoys me about this Captain Marvel and the way they are executing her in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, is that this character is not being brought into the struggle organically. She's being brought in in such a way that she's coming across like a deuce ex machina and a Mary Sue character who's going to come in and save the day for everyone. And when they do that, they destroy all the credibility they have built up in the Marvel Cinematic Universe for the last 10 years. Because over the last 10 years, we have been told that the Incredible Hulk is a very powerful character, a very strong character, and the Mighty Thor is an incredibly strong character. And characters like Iron Man have evolved their technology to the point where they've become incredibly powerful. Now, in the comic books, um, the Incredible Hulk is supposed to be the strongest one that there is. And when you bring in Captain Marvel and have her moving planets like Superman, what you're doing is you're compromising the integrity of the Marvel comics, and you're taking liberties with the Marvel comics that people don't want to see. Because one of the strengths of Marvel Studios was their efforts to maintain the integrity to the source material. They always made an effort to stay true to the source material, and by you going up here and saying that Captain Marvel can move planets, that compromises the source material. This is the same type of liberty that your Salkins made when they made Superman 3 and 4, and the same type of liberty that your Joel Schumacher took when he made Batman Forever and Batman and Robin, and the same type of liberties that Zack Snyder took in many of his DC movies. Unfortunately, many Marvel Studios fans, they're so caught up in their emotions that they can't see that the compromises being made on screen with this Captain Marvel. Because when I look at this Captain Marvel and they're saying that she's so powerful that she can move planets, that's a complete compromise of the Marvel Universe and a complete deviation from the Marvel comic book universe to creating something of your own and creating your own ideas. And it looks like they're trying to try to shoehorn identity politics into the Marvel Cinematic Universe with Captain Marvel. And this shoehorning of identity politics, what that looks like to me is it looks like the, the Marvel Studios is in serious, serious trouble. Because when I look at this decision to make Captain Marvel this powerful, this is a complete compromise of the Marvel Cinematic Universe and deviates completely away from the Marvel Comics. Because in the Marvel Comics, the Hulk is the strongest one there is. And when it comes down to Thor, Thor is one of the most powerful characters in the Marvel Universe, and he's the strongest Avenger overall. And, sec and the second most powerful Avenger back in the 70s was Iron Man. So when I take a look at this decision to make Captain Marvel this powerful, again, it's a complete compromise of the source material, and it's something comic fans really need to take a serious look at, because when they start making compromises like this and the decisions they've made with Infinity War and Spider-Man Homecoming, I'm starting to see, again, the building blocks of the beginning of the end of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, because... What happened to destroy the Superman franchise and the Batman franchise was producers starting to take liberties with the source material, starting to make efforts to deviate from the source material, and then adapting their own ideas instead of trying to stay true to the comics. And that's why I said Marvel Studios has lost its direction and lost its way, and that's why I say Marvel Studios is in serious trouble because once you start making compromises to the source material and you start going away from the source material that's when you start having ridiculous ideas put on screen like those nipples on the Batman costume for Batman Forever and Batman and Robin and you have 
ridiculous things like Mr. Freeze wearing a helmet that exposes his face to the warm temperatures that would kill him. And when I look at Captain Marvel, I see the same type of decisions being made. And what I see there with Captain Marvel, again, is an attempt to make this character into the Mary Sue who goes out here and saves the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and she's going to save it all by herself. But when she saves it, what she's going to do is emasculate all the male characters in the Marvel Cinematic Universe and destroy the credibility of all the characters in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Now, when I take a look at Ant-Man and the Wasp trailer, I see this whole theme of feminism starting to slowly creep in because we have the bumbling, stumbling Scott Lang and the super intelligent Hope Van Dyne, who's so smart, she can do literally anything. And that's another form of Mary Suing, where you have this character who just decides she can do everything, and she's so smart, but the male character is shown to be a bumbling, stumbling idiot. And this is not what I saw back in 2008 when they did Iron Man, even though they did, Tony did delegate the pushing of the arc reactor to Pepper Potts, but still there was some balance there. But when I take a look at this um, Ant-Man and the Wasp and the way the Wasp is acting, and I take a look at this Captain Marvel and the talk about her power set, I see how gynocentrism is creeping into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and I see how gynocentrism may lead to the decline of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, because when you go out of your way to emasculate the male heroes the way that they're planning to, what's going to happen is you're going to wind up alienating the comic fans who have been watching this universe over the last 10 years because all these characters, again, they were supposed to come together for this infinity struggle and we wanted to see them overcome the odds of things. But when I take a look at this Captain Marvel character, it looks like she's going to be built up in the same way that Ray was to be this Mary Sue and this deus ex machina who's going to come in here and emasculate everyone and that's not something people want to pay money to go see and if they, this is the direction they're going to go in I see the Marvel Cinematic Universe going from being a successful group of movies to falling apart at the end with one of the worst conclusions overall because this Captain Marvel character as I see it you know this is not a good decision to make her the flagship character for the future of Marvel Comics, because not Marvel Comics, but Marvel Studios, because if this character cannot prove herself through the way of merit, the way Iron Man did by going out here and having a successful box office, or the same way that Black Panther did by having a successful box office, then there is no reason to make her a flagship character and use her as the foundation to build the rest of the Marvel Universe on, because that's a position she did not earn, and when it comes down to many beta males out here, they often try to elevate women to high positions that they did not earn and did not prove to earn, and that's not right at all. I mean, no character should be higher or based on um, out of nowhere for their gender. It should be based on can they bring in the box office, do they have the charisma, and can you lay a constructive foundation for building the rest of the universe around that character based on things as related to organic storytelling. And when I look at Captain Marvel, this is a character, again, who cannot prove to anyone that she is ready to be a success to build on. What she is is just a character that feminists and SJWs like, and because those feminists and SJWs want to see a woman in a leadership position, they are going to force her into this leadership position, whether she fits into it organically or not. If you want to try some of my SJS Direct publications like the ISIS series, the East Team series, the Temptation of John Haynes and the Spinsterella Trilogy, you may do so by clicking the link to Amazon.com in the description box. And if you want to help me make more videos like this, you can donate to my Patreon by clicking the link in the description box. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe.